Aquaponics systems promise to feed your whole family in just a few square metres, not only with beautiful fresh veggies, but fantastic protein at a much lower cost and much lower resource requirement because fish are so efficient. Meet Ian Campbell. Ian, how are you, mate? Fantastic, Tim, and yourself? Not too bad. Now, you travel the country, Ian, overcoming common errors that people make when setting up aquaponic systems, like this one, which is really well set up, but there's a few simple things that can be done to make this even more efficient. That's correct. So there is a few things that we can do and they're really simple fixes to actually get your aquaponic system humming. So sit back, grab yourself a cup of tea, let's go through some of the common errors that people make when they set up their aquaponic systems, what to do about them and how to get your system humming and feed your whole family. And have fun. <laughs> So Ian, before we get started mate, what is aquaponics and how is it different to a system that a lot of people are familiar with, hydroponics? Okay, well aquaponics is a combination of two technologies, it's aquaculture and hydroponics. So we use the two technologies and we've just overlapped them. So here we've got a, a, a tank with fish in them and up here we've got plants so what happens is we've got a pump and it pumps the water up into the grow bed the grow bed circulates the water through the plants the plants take the nutrients out of the water and then the water falls but back down into the tank where the fish are and it's clean water and we can grow two crops with the same water and because we've got the fish down the bottom and they're releasing ammonia we can do without soil and we can just have sterile media that the plants grow in. Yes, you can. Can you soil? I, I like to use soil myself because I'm a bit old fashioned. Yep. But you can use just um, any sort of media. And I always recommend to people whatever's local. Aquaponics is also really efficient, isn't it? You can grow protein for very little feed input and you can grow plants for very little water. Yes. And that kind of makes sense in a dry country like Australia, doesn't it? Oh, we're the driest continent on earth and we're the highest users of water. So when everyone looks at their um, carbon footprint, no one really thinks about their water footprint. So if you look on the internet and, you know, Google it, um, your water footprint and see how much it takes to grow one lettuce. So it all depends on what website you look at. It's around about 120 litres of water per lettuce. Whereas you were telling me in an aquaponic system it can be as low as four litres for one lettuce. Oh, two. As low as two litres. Wow. So, yeah. And the only water loss is through the cleaning of the system and the transpiration through the leaves of the plants. Now, there's a few things that you can do really right and there's a few things that you can do that create yourself a lot of work. Let's go and have a look at a few things that maybe we shouldn't be doing in aquaponic systems that are going to create work for us and make us hate them in the end. Yes, it will take a longer time away from what you really want to be doing. Now Ian, common misconception or mistake number one is using these clay balls or scoria. We've got a combination of both here. You reckon that's sort of a bit of a recipe for disaster over time for people? It is a bit of a recipe for disaster if you don't look after it. Yep. And the reality is we're all time poor. Yes. So we want to actually do things where we can let things thrive with neglect. And this stuff here, you do have to maintain it. So what happens with, um, you got these clay balls and inside these clay balls, you got a lot of little holes and that's where the bacteria grow. And there's two types of bacteria. So there's heterotrophs and autotrophs. So the autotrophs, let's call them, let's make you an autotroph. So you're an autotroph bacteria. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> and I'm a heterotroph bacteria. So we want to promote you in the system because that's what makes the systems work. And my job is to turn the ammonia from the fish into nitrogen for the plants, isn't it? Yeah, and I can do that too as a heterotroph bacteria, but I'm not as efficient. Right. So we want to promote more of yours. So what happens is, we're all living in there together. So all these bacteria, the heterotrophs and the autotrophs, are living in the surface area of these clay balls and busily turning the ammonia from the fish poo into nitrogen fertilizer for the plants and making our crop grow. That's 100% correct. Now, what happens after time, you get a lot of fish poo in the system and I enjoy that more than you do. Mm -hmm. So we take over. And after we take over, then we start to eat all the autotrophic bacteria and we reduce the efficiency. I don't, I'm not sure I like this story anymore. <laughs> 
Oh, that's all right. It's, it's, I've taken over. Okay. But the only reason I've taken over is because we haven't cleaned the system correctly. So we've got to get the fish poo out before they get to the to the right. gravel. So if people are using these these sort of clay balls and scoria and stuff like that, they're going to have to invest in a pretty fancy filtration system, aren't they? Oh, you don't have to be pretty fancy, but you have to be onto it. You yep. got to you got to maintain it, and in our time poor community that we are, we really don't want to do that. So that's why I'll just throw a sheet of polystyrene on here, and some people might have seen that. So you got you got liquid underneath this. Yes. And you're just going to have polystyrene floating on top of the liquid, no media at all. No media at all. Okay. Okay. I know it sounds a bit weird, but um, that's we're getting how... a bit adventurous now, aren't we? Yes, and and that's easier to keep clean. Okay. But you can do this, and the systems that do have this in, and the floating raft, and they might even have vertical gardens, they're hybrid systems. Yep. So you can do anything that you like, as long as you've got the time and the money to maintain it. But if you want to save time and money, don't get this stuff. No, don't get Just this Just get stuff. a floating bed. Just get a floating bed. Now, number two, mate, we've got pretty complex filtering system here haven't we we have and and what's really happened to you this and this, it's really exciting what's been done here it's it really clever because I, I love it when people actually think outside the box yep so um, this one here is actually using an airlift system instead of a, a pump right so to me this is still in the experimental stage yep to get it right it's just sizing the air pump right to suit what's actually happening it'd probably take another six to twelve months to to get it right but if you want to get it right right from the very beginning use existing technologies like a water pump just a submersible water pump yep and just go on what's actually out there that you can use at that particular time. Now Ian, there's one more thing that people get wrong with aquaponic systems and that is complex convoluted pipe work and you reckon that's where all the foul flavours in fish come from? A hundred percent. So what happens is um, when you're putting your pipe work in you've got to have areas where you can take a cap off so you can rot it or you can blow the water out because uh, uh, after time all that gunk builds up inside the pipe work and that's where all the off flavours from the fish come from. And you, you learnt this from an old chap at a farm once. Yeah that's right I was working on this farm at near um, Albury Wodonga and this sort of like hillbilly came along and he started drinking the water out of the tanks and we go what's this guy doing and anyway he said those fish from this tank are going to taste like mud and that tank over there is going to taste like this and this tank's going to taste like that and he was 100% right what the water tastes like is what the fish tastes like so your pipes determine your fish flavor they do. So what are the hints? Keep the pipes nice and straight, minimise your corners. That's right, have an inspection opening so you can open it and blow all the crap out of there. You even have a bristle rod that you put down some yeah, of your pipes. Yeah, just like, um, what do they call it? I stole the baby cleaner thing, the bottle yep. baby cleaner thing, and I put it on an electrical conduit, and I just rod the pipe works, nice straight runs, so I can clean it nice and easy. You might not get 100% of it done, but if you can get 80% of it done, it's better than nothing. Clean pipes, good tasting fish. That's exactly right. Now Ian, mushy fish. Some people that have had fish out of aquaponic systems say, yeah, nah, they're just not the same out of river caught fish. The muscle texture's not just there. There's a way to fix that, isn't there? Oh yeah, yeah, there's a way to fix everything. So what we do is we we get a vertical manifold and we put it down. So like a pipe, like straight a pipe, down in the water? Straight down with a cap on the bottom of it. Yep. About every two inches we, we drill holes mm -hmm. in it and then you can actually... And you pump it, your water through this? Pump the water through it and it will start to create a vortex in the tank. So you're creating an artificial current in the tank? That's right. And it does two things. One, the fish will come up to it and they'll start swimming into it yep. and they'll like it. And then you'll see the front fish will actually go back behind that one and they keep on swimming into it. So like birds? Like birds. They swap the leader position? That's right. You can't make it too fast. Right. Because you make it too fast, you'll wear them out and they'll die. So you just got to get it flowing enough so they're actually enjoying that, that current. And the yep. other thing as well, 
all the crap from the tank goes into the center of it. So it makes your tank easier to clean? It makes your tank easy to clean. Mate, you've got a solution for everything. Oh, just don't ask me where your um, oil stick is in your engine because I don't know anything about engines. Now, feeding your fish, and there's a rule of thumb, grams per square metre per day to stop our plants going yellow like this. Yeah. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. So, we 60 grams per square metre per day will give you good growth. And that's our rule wow. of thumb calculation. That's a pretty impressive amount, but if you put that amount of feed into a system that's not functioning well, you can actually kill your fish, can't you? A hundred percent. And some people don't even have the amount of fish in there that can handle 60 grams of feed. So you gotta get your stock and density up so it can handle that feed. Well, let's talk a couple of hints with your water supply to make sure that your system can handle that amount of feed and let's talk about what you should be doing with your water supply. So Ian, water's pretty important, isn't it? Quality of water coming into your growing area is critical. At the moment, this system has water being pumped out of the fish tank straight into the growing area. You'd like to see a filter separating the fish from the plants. You don't want to see the filter after the plants. No, no. It, this system here, it's promoting the wrong bacteria. So what's happening is we're getting all the fish poo and We've got all this algae coming up yeah, underneath yeah. The, the pipe where that's, it's coming out. That's right. So you'll find that your heterotrophic bacteria will get a foothold here. Yep. And once it gets a foothold here, it will spread through the system. And, and like, you know, your leaves on, on the top it will break down. And then that's more food for your heterotrophic bacteria. And we don't want to promote that. We want so we want to keep our growth area thoroughly clean and free of any algae. Because that's an indication of dirty water. That's right, and we want good growth and not too much work. Flow rates from water are important? Yes, 100%. And it, you calculate your flow rates based on what you want for your lifestyle. So if you want to grow one kilo of fish, you design a system and the flow rates for one kilo of fish per week. If you want 10 kilos of fish per week, you design your system to handle that. So you just work it all out and then that's your system. And if people want a hand with this or they want to get into the community or get some more information about this, there's an Aquaponics Australia Facebook page and you can get plenty of information, advice, and comments on, on your system design from there. 100%. Guys, there's a link in the description to the Facebook page. Let's keep going. Okay. Now, we've been talking aquaponics probably for about 10 minutes, mate. We've been having a great conversation, but we haven't talked about fish yet. No, no, we haven't. So when you're going to buy your fish, I always say start off with what's local. No use trying to grow trout in Queensland or Barramundi in Victoria. Look at what's local yep. and go to your local fish hatchery. Now when you go to your local fish hatchery, you'll say, oh, I want the biggest fish that you got for the cheapest price. It's only natural. But what you really want is you want the thickest fish. You want the thickest fish and it, it, don't worry too much about the price, but you want good genetics as well. Because if you've got your system set up well, they're going to grow anyway, aren't they? That's exactly right. So you want right. nice, fat, healthy fish to start with. That's it. Because sometimes at the end of the season, um, you might get a big fish, but it's really skinny and maciated. So you put it in your system and it's not going too well. So if you get a nice, thick, fat fish that's healthy and you put it in the system, it's going to get on the tucker a lot quicker. And remember how we talked about it's all about the feed rate, the feed going into the system creates the poo that creates our tucker. So what you want to do is you want to try and keep local, yep. keep to the species that's in your local area, and you might have the opportunity to grow two crops at once. So you can grow a winter crop of fish and you can grow a summer crop of fish because fish like different water temperatures and oxygen concentrations and blah, 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 blah. That's exactly right. And also as well, you've got to be very careful in your local area what you're going to grow. So just check your local legislation in yep. your catchment. So you could be in the same state, but it could be different regulations for different catchments because they're a bit paranoid about things escaping into the waterways. So you're better off to go to your local hatchery because they'll know what fish you're safely and legally allowed to have in your aquaponic system because the fines are fairly heavy if you get it wrong, aren't they? A hundred percent. Now there's another reason why you shouldn't go down to your local river or your local dam, catch some fish and throw them in, and that's parasites? 
a hundred percent. You could pick up a local parasite from your local river, stream, wild fish, I haven't been cleaned. If you get them from a hatchery, they're a hundred percent safe. So um, yeah, if you get that parasite into your system, it could wipe out all your fish and uh, you might not ever get it out. And the same goes for using animal manures on the plants. You, yes. You've got an aquaponic system for a reason. The fish are gonna feed the plants. Don't be tempted to throw some sheep or cattle poo up in there because you could end up with a nasty liver fluke problem, couldn't you? That's exactly right. I've, I've only known of one system in Australia to get it, but if you do your research, you'll find that the liver fluke has a life cycle with little snails, water snails in your system, and the liver fluke can actually travel up into your plants and get into your plants and then you ingest that and then all of a sudden you've got a bigger problem. So keep animal manures out of this system. So keep your fish clean, make sure you get them from a reputable location, get healthy fish, don't get the biggest, cheapest fish, get small fish that are fat because they'll grow better. That's exactly right. And do the right thing and you'll be much better off for it. A hundred percent. Well, Ian, we've learned a lot about aquaponics today and I think the big clear message that I'm getting out of this whole video is that you can do it. You can feed your family in a very small space and you can feed it very efficiently using very little water and very little nutrient. But the overriding message here is keep it clean, start simple and don't overthink things. That's exactly right. Mate, thank you very much for your time today and if people want to find out more they can get onto you through your Facebook page, Aquaponics Australia. The link is in the description. Mate, thank you very much and I'm hoping that we can see more of your larger commercial systems in the future. Sounds like a plan. Guys, if you like this kind of stuff and you don't want to miss out on the next video with Ian and who would, make sure you hit the subscribe button down there, give it a like and we'll see you next week.